Hello friends, this video on microbes in human welfare part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we will talk about the secondary treatment of sewage. Now what happens is the effluent from primary treatment is passed on for secondary treatment as I mentioned. So effluent is now free of all the solid particles and all visible particles basically. It is free from all that. So this effluent will go on for secondary treatment. Now what happens during secondary treatment? Constant agitation of the effluent. So the effluent is constantly agitated. So now this effluent is passed on to different tanks which are often termed as aeration tanks. Now why are they called aeration tank? Because air is constantly pumped into the tank. So that is why they are called aeration tanks. So now the effluent which, which was received from the primary treatment, so that is passed on to these tanks where air is constantly pumped in and also the effluent is constantly agitated. Now once it is, I mean once it undergoes these processes, what happens? Vigorous growth of aerobic microbes take place because air is being pumped in. So there is enough oxygen available. So when a lot of oxygen is available, more and more aerobic microbes will grow. Because these microbes, they need oxygen. So vigorous growth of aerobic microbes will take place. And these microbes, now aerobic microbes need some food to survive. And from where will they get food? They receive food from organic matter. So what will happen is these aerobic microbes start to consume all the organic matter which is present in the effluent. Now, when I am talking about the effluent, I am right now talking about the primary effluent which is received at the end of the primary treatment. So now in this uh, effluent, what are we left with? Like most of the solid particles are got, all gone. So now we are mostly left with the organic matter which is in a kind of dissolved form in the water. So now in order to remove the organic matter, what do we do? We make more and more aerobic microbes grow in the tank. Now when there are more aerobic microbes, their demand for organic matter is also more so they will start consuming more and more organic matter so the amount of organic matter which is present in the primary effluent that will start decreasing and that is how we can make the uh, effluent more clearer more I mean, less dirt free by reducing the amount of organic matter now what will happen when the organic matter keeps reducing? Now by the end of the secondary treatment again the entire primary effluent will get divided into two parts. One is the sludge and one is the secondary effluent. Right? So now by the end of this process. So gradually as time passes the amount of organic matter will keep on reducing. So organic matter will keep reducing in the primary effluent reduces in primary effluent because it is all consumed by the aerobic microbes. Now this is where we introduce a new parameter called BOD. Now what, what is BOD? BOD is actually biochemical oxygen demand which is often abbreviated as BOD. Now this is nothing but a way or a parameter to measure that how much is the organic content in the primary effluent. That is, it will actually tell us how much clean the sewage has become or how much percentage or not percentage exactly to what extent the sewage has been treated or when to stop the secondary treatment. So it is a measure of that. So BOD is defined as the amount of oxygen needed by aerobic organisms in water to break down organic material in water at a particular temperature over a period of time. Now, the concept here is very simple. Now, when you have more organic wastes, so when you have more organic wastes, what happens? How are the aerobic microbes being produced? What, what uh, promotes or what encourages the growth of aerobic microbes? The constant agitation and the constant pumping in of air. So these are the two factors which encourage the growth of more and more aerobic microbes. Now if there, uh, there is more organic material, that would mean that more aerobic microbes will be 
formed now if more aerobic microbes are formed what will happen their need of oxygen will be more because all of them need oxygen so when the number of aerobic organisms are more the amount of oxygen they need is also more and if the amount of oxygen is more then biochemical oxygen demand will also be more that is value of bod will be more so what does this mean when value of bod is more that time the number of aerobic organisms is also more and that happens when the amount of organic material is more now when the amount of organic material is more that means the water is or the sewage is less treated that means the sewage is has more polluting potential because what is our aim in sewage treatment our aim is to treat the sewage in such a way that its polluting potential decreases that so that it becomes less harmful so that it become it has less ability to cause pollution so here there is a very simple and direct relationship that lesser the value of bod lesser is its polluting potential so we have to ensure that the value of bod reduces to a very large extent because when the value of bod reduces greatly the polluting potential of the sewage also reduces greatly and that is where we stop the secondary treatment and we say that okay the sewage is properly treated now secondary treatment is continued till bod is considerably reduced okay so once bod has reduced considerably then we know that okay so now the water has very less uh, amount of organic material and it is quite safe to dispose the water directly into some water body now the question is what happens once the secondary treatment is stopped now even at the end of the secondary treatment the primary effluent from where the secondary treatment started that gets divided into two parts now what happens is now that if you look at the entire process of sewage treatment you started with the sewage first it underwent the primary treatment so once it underwent the primary treatment what was formed sludge was formed which was unwanted so we did not wanted it and the second thing that was formed was the primary effluent so this primary effluent was further considered for secondary treatment so secondary treatment took place with the primary effluent and as a result of secondary treatment again sludge is formed which is the unwanted matter and what have what else and secondary effluent now in this case the secondary effluent which is formed what is that that is good enough to be directly disposed into water bodies so this is directly disposed to water bodies because it has very less bod so secondary effluent so now what do you see from this sewage which has a lot of which has very high polluting potential after the treatment you could arrive at secondary effluent which has very less polluting potential so it is very safe to dispose it off directly into the water bodies so that is how the entire process of um, sewage treatment takes place and you see how important microbes are so here also if you see without these aerobic organisms the process of secondary treatment would have not taken place so microbes play a very important role in the secondary treatment so here also you can see that microbes are for human welfare now the question is now after this entire process is com completed what will happen to this sludge what will this what will happen to the sludge which is formed as a result of secondary treatment so let us have a look at what happens once bod has reduced significantly now now what happens is the effluent is now passed on to a settling tank so now the effluent which we received that is now for secondary treatment is what it the primary effluent was passed on to the aeration tanks now after secondary treatment is done the effluent which is received which has less bod is passed on to a settling tank and bacterial masses sediment at the bottom forming activated sludge so the entire thing which is formed as a result of the secondary treatment that will be passed to a settling tank where it will be just left on its own for some time so what will happen is the masses bacterial masses will sediment at the bottom and this will form the activated sludge now this sludge is again something which we do not want so 
what will happen? The secondary effluent which will be formed out of this. So the secondary effluent will be directly disposed of and this activated sludge which is being formed that will be sent back to anaerobic sludge digesters. So here you can see this is the raw water and this was passed onto the aeration tanks where constantly air was being pumped in. So this was happening during the secondary treatment. Now air was being pumped in as a result of this what do we, you get from here you have the settling tank. So it will pass the entire thing to the settling tank. In the settling tank this is the at the top side you will have the secondary effluent that means the effluent which is received at the end of the secondary treatment and at the bottom what do you have at the bottom you have the activated sludge so this top portion that is secondary effluent which is relatively with lesser BOD that is the treated water and this will be directly disposed of so this will be directly disposed of and what happens to this this is passed back to the same aeration tank where it can be used up again because this bacterial masses contain those aerobic organisms which can actually help in this process of uh, decomposition which was taking place in the aeration tank so for that purpose this can be used back and it can be recycled so the now this entire process takes place in such a way so that the sludge which is being produced can also be utilized. Now not the entire sludge is passed back into the aeration tank. Some part of the sludge is passed back into the aeration tank and the remaining sludge is sent back for sludge treatment. Now some of these sludge are passed back to aeration tanks to act as starters. That means it can start the process which was taking place inside the aeration tank. And what happens to the remaining ones? The remaining are passed on to anaerobic sludge digesters. So as I said, so these are passed on to anaerobic sludge digesters. Now what happens in anaerobic sludge digester? So ana in anaerobic sludge digesters, there are anaerobic bacteria. That is those bacteria which can survive in absence of oxygen. So these bacteria will digest the microbes which are present in the sludge. So whatever microbes are present, they will be digested. And during this digestion several gases are produced like carbon dioxide, hydrogen sulfide, methane and due to the production of all these gases a foul smell is being produced. However, important thing is that an important gas or an important renewable source of energy called biogas is also produced as a result of this process. So anaerobic sludge digester is also important because what happens here is the anaerobic bacteria so since they do not need oxygen so you do not need the aeration tank at all so this anaerobic bacteria will digest the microbes which are present in the sludge so as a result the sludge will get treated in some way because the microbes the sludge gets rid of the microbes now during this process a lot of gases are produced as i said just now so that is what happens in the anaerobic sludge digester and this is how the entire process of sewage treatment takes place first primary treatment where the only the solid particles are removed then the from the primary treatment the primary effluent is passed on to the aeration tank where the secondary treatment starts in aeration tank air is pumped in so that the uh, aerobic microbes can grow and multiply these aerobic microbes will cause breakdown of the organic matter the BOD is constantly observed when the BOD has reduced significantly then it is passed on to the settling tank in the settling tank the effluent separates from the sludge effluent is directly disposed of into water bodies whereas the sludge a part of it is used as a starter in the aeration tank so that it can start the process of secondary treatment and the remaining is passed on to anaerobic digesters where anaerobic bacteria in absence of oxygen will digest the microbes in the sludge so this is how the entire process takes place so i hope that you understood the process if not please recap and understand the entire process process. So effluent from the settling tank is finally released into the water bodies because this effluent is relatively clean. It has less BOD and therefore less polluting and less harmful. Thank you. 
Please visit examfear.com for an easy four-step learning process absolutely free of cost. Watch video lessons, ask questions, refer notes and take an online test. Thank you once again.